In this video, I'm going to share with you the benefit of holding and selling properties. So many people approached me recently said, oh, the economy, the economy is taking a, a turn and things are going really, really bad. Is it, is it the right time to actually hold properties or whether it's best to sell? So there, there, are, there, there are various ways or there are different things you could do with property in order to be able to make money from it. One of it would be selling. We call it flipping. And the other way is actually buying the property, re renovating it and then renting it. So I'd like to talk to you about these two differences so you can know what the pros and cons are and what sort of strategy you really want to do or whether you can put them together to build your property investment portfolio. Before we get going, if you like this video or any of my videos, hit the like button below, subscribe to my channel for more amazing tutorials. Liking that video, subscribing to my channel is what pushes that video up there on YouTube. So I really would appreciate if you could like and subscribe to my channel so we can get to grow the, ch the channel um, to um, tens of thousands. So thank you for supporting me. I really, really appreciate you. I really appreciate all the likes. I really appreciate all the comments. It literally um, gives me goosebumps and also it inspires me to actually do what I'm doing right now. So if you've not hit that like button below now right now, hit it now and let's get going. But before we, um, we, we actually start talking ab ab about the benefit, it's important for us to know what the differences are, okay? So, 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 so if you're buying a property for the intention to kind of rent it, it's called buy, refurbish, and refinance. When you buy the property, you refurbish it, you refinance it, and you rent it to a tenant. Or you could actually buy a property that's already done up and rent it. That's what we call a turnkey, right? You can buy it and rent it straight away. And the, and, and the other strategy some people do is what we call flip, flipping the property. What does flipping the property mean? It means you buy the property and then sell it on, basically. Okay? These are the two differences. You buy and hold and you buy and sell. So let's talk about flipping a property. Okay? So when you're flipping a property, i.e. when you're selling a property, you normally or you usually look for properties that are dilapidated, properties that you can add value to and you can sell at higher rates, Property, the properties that you could even modernize, okay? So it's similar, well, it's exactly the same way when you're buying a BRRR property, buy, refurbish and refinance property. They're kind of in the same condition, okay? But if you're flipping it, you're, you're buying the property, you renovate the property and sell it on instead of holding it, right? The key differences are when you're renovating a property to sell and then renovating a property to, to kind of hold on, the renovation cost is different and the type of things you do in these properties are different as well. So let's talk about flipping now. When you're flipping the property, you'd have to have your customer in mind. You need to know whether you're targeting doctors, lawyers, accountants, directors, right? If you know your market, then you can renovate accordingly to attract that market. Maybe you want to buy a little bit more expensive stuff in the property. Maybe you want to have expensive laminate flooring, maybe underfloor heating, for example, an expensive kitchen, an ex expensive dining, dining table. Or maybe you want to like kind of bring that premium in it for, for that target market. Right, so it might be a bit expensive doing that, but because you know if you've done the property up, you would not just force the value, you'd also have people that are kind of in a, in a middle class to kind of buy this sort of property. So you can afford to kind of be, make, the, make the renovation work a bit expensive. And then obviously you will then renovate the property. Once you've renovated the, the, um, the um, property, you will then hand it back to an agent to sell for you at the market rate. You would have already determined how much you may be able to sell the property at. And then obviously you, you, you walk back then and understand how much profit you'd like to make in a property, right? If you're selling a property, investors normally make anywhere from 15 to about 30,000 pounds profit per property, depending um, the area and the type of property you are renovating as well. So you've done, you will do the renovation works. And also if you're selling the property because you're not renting it, there's something that we call holding cost. Holding cost is the amount of money you kind of expense whilst you're waiting for the property to sell. This could be council tax because you've already done the property up. It could be electricity, gas, and it could also be 
um, cleaning because obviously if the property is not sold for like a couple of weeks or so there's dust settling in and all that sort of thing so basically you would need that sort of cost in order to be able to sell the property and one of the biggest costs would be the agency fees because you would pay the agency to sell the property for you and some agents ask uh, some agent asks for one percent some ask for two thousand some ask for three thousand depending what agent that you go on with or you go ahead with so 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 these are the costs you need to consider if you were to sell a property right so if you sell that property then if you're making 15 to 20 thousand pounds it's a kind of a good return on your investment okay in contrast if you are buying a property to kind of hold the renovation side of things is a bit different right you're not going to go and buy expensive stuff for the property again this depends on your target market okay so you want to buy average good quality stuff that that is good enough to allow you to rent the property maybe you want to go for a greenwich kitchen for example not expensive kitchen uh, maybe you want to go for um, laminate lower class laminate flooring because you know you're renting the property and obviously you may be changing these things every few years anyway so you are the one who's going to be paying for it so you, you don't want to go a while on your renovation works so that then reduces that cost slightly okay and then obviously then you will then do the property up right if you have not been able to rent the property up again there's a little bit of holding cost there which would be the electricity gas and then obviously council tax but if you follow my golden rules the way i buy my property your property will get rented before you actually finish the works okay so um yeah so if you if you're following me or, or if, you've been, if you've been to my courses, you would know that then I have specific Go Golden rules I implement to allow you to rent the property as soon as you finish the work. So again, then if you're able to rent it, happy days, there's no holding cost for you. So what you then do basically, you will remortgage the property, right? And hopefully pull all your investment out or some of your investment out. And then obviously you've got yourself a property that will give you reoccurring income right the difference is on the price of purchasing the property at the beginning if you are selling the property maybe you know what you want to if you know what you want to add on to the property that will still give you a profit you may not haggle on the purchase price because you will say okay you know what i am going to do this property as a four bedroom five bedroom i have an extension so i may be able to sell this property at two hundred and fifty thousand pounds so if i buy it four hundred and fifty thousand pounds i'll still be able to make thirty to fifty thousand pounds profit so you don't really haggle on the price as long as there's the room to add significant value and knowing that market would allow you to determine how much you're going to buy the property in contrast, if you're purchasing a buy, refurbish and refinance property, you would want to negotiate on the property price a bit more. Here is why. It's because you're not going to be selling the property at market rate and you're going to be renovating the property and remortgage it. And the, and the thing you need to note there is basically some valuation officers will, will kind of downvalue your property slightly. Say if the property is going now, going uh, if you're selling the property for, so if the property was to be sold at say 100,000, just to get the figures right, 100,000, if the value comes round, they may value it at 95,000 or probably 90,000, okay? So hence the reason why in the, in, in, in the initial process buying the property, that's when you need to be started, that's when you negotiate in order to factor that in in the future. Okay, because you know then the, the, the valuation of officer may downvalue the property for you. And again, if they don't if the property is, is not been downvalued, that still gives you that ten thousand pounds cushion basically. Okay, hence the reason why if you're renovating and keeping the property, you want to negotiate a little bit so that you know then you've got that cushion should anything goes wrong. If you're flipping, then obviously you know the market, you know how demanding that, that area is you've got room to kind of um, to, 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 to kind of not haggle on the price that much. That's one of the key, key differences. Okay? And the other difference between flipping the property and holding the, the um, property, if you hold the property, you are having reoccurring income. Now, what do I mean by reoccurring income? What I mean there is basically you will rent the property to a tenant and that tenant would be paying you rent in a monthly basis. So taking out all your expenses, you may be making about 300 to 400 pounds net profit every single month. So that's what we call reoccurring income. So you're making money um, whilst you sleep. 
meaning that property is still going to make you money every single month whether you live in the property or not because you're renting it out okay and the other benefit you get is what we call capital appreciation property prices tend to go up in average property prices goes up by 7.5 percent um, in the past 80 years so fast forward a couple of years from now or three years from now your property would have gone up by 10 15 or 20 percent so what you could do basically if you're a property investor you can go and remortgage pull some of that value out or pull some of that equity out plus your rent you go and buy yourself another property so these are some of the benefits you could get from holding the property in contrast if you buy a property you fix it and sell it you make money straight away if it's 15,000 you make that as profit if it's 25,000 you get that as profit so 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 you get a quick cash okay uh, which is fantastic to, for, for um, other people who are looking to build a cash pot. But if you're looking to build wealth, maybe you want to hold on to the properties because you, you're getting slightly less money every month. But in, in, in the long run, you're making more money than the person who's selling. Because when the person sells, he's not going to get monthly rental income. And also, he won't be able to get the benefit of the capital appreciation because he would have sold the assets. He would get a quick cash, but there's no long-term benefit after he sold the property. So if you're, if you're renting, then obviously you've got that benefit, okay? These are the two contrasts, okay? These are, what, these are the main contrasts if you're looking to sell, right? Hence the reason why it's important for you to know what your objectives are. Why are you in properties, right? What is your strategy? How do you want to build your property portfolio? Or do you just want to flip properties because you don't like to manage tenants or you don't like to manage properties? You don't like to kind of deal with the problems that comes with owning a property, right? You need to, de you need to de determine those two outcomes and make a decision on what strategy you want to get into, right? So looking at buy, refurbish and refinance, why I like the buy, refurbish and refinance strategy if you know what you're doing, you get you get way benefit, more benefit than the person who's who is flipping. Let me tell you why. If you know how to buy a dilapidated property at discount, right? You renovate it, you may be able to recycle all your money out, right? Suppose you bought a property for say um, uh, eighty thousand pounds. You you do that property up. That property come back at hundred and forty thousand pounds you will be able to recycle all that money and you go on and buy another property. You can carry on with that. You can buy multiple of properties without running out of money. And again, imagine then you've got £300 or £400 every month passive coming in after you've done the hard work once. If you buy five properties at £400, you're making £2,000 passive income every single month if you're renting the property to a family, right? So you've got that every single month. Whereas if you sold that property, you may have made, if it's five properties, you may have made maybe £100,000, but, but that's it. You know, that £100,000 is what you get. You don't get monthly rent, you don't get capital app app appreciation, and obviously that's end off, basically, okay? And uh, with buy, refurbish and refinance, you may manage the property. That may be a, a, a disadvantage if you want to manage it. But nowadays, there's so many state agencies out there that you could use to, to, to actually manage your property. Okay, so now that then gets you to start thinking, what strategy do I use? Right. What strategy is best for me? Again, it depends on your financial situation or it depends on your physical s situation or it depends what you want to do. Right. It all depends, basically. So suppose you want to build your property portfolio but you do not have lots of money to keep keeping on okay so i've got some 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 of my students who come to me who are in that sort of situation so what we advise them to do is basically is to do the three two one rule the three two one rule is basically you buy three properties right you sell two and you keep one right you sell two and keep one to be slowly build your property portfolio whilst you're making cash suppose you got two properties and you sold them say we made twenty-five thousand pounds profit per property you've, you would have made fifty thousand pounds net profit in, in that property so if you've kept one property you've got now enough money to go again to buy one extra property okay and then do that property uphold it go and buy another property and then obviously sell that get that money back and then you move on so that way you'll be able to build a cash pot whilst building your property portfolio right so if you're just starting up 
you want to raise cash pot, you could do the three to one rule or you want to just buy one property, right? Sell it, make profit, buy another one, keep it, right? And then you, you keep doing the same cycle, right? That way they'll be able to get, have a cash pot at the same time, them able to build a property portfolio, right? But for me, I don't like to sell properties. I know people are saying you're crazy. I don't sell properties. I can, I can literally count how many properties I sold my properties, okay? I don't like to sell it because I, I see the long-term effect and I like the capital appreciation as well. But if you're not, if you don't, if you haven't got that money right now and you want quick cash, that's the way to actually do it, right? And then you can then start keeping your property. So if, if I was to pick one of those strategies, if I was a beginner that hasn't got lots of money, I will do the three, two, one rule. But if I've got money and I'm able to recycle my money, especially having a good mentor and coach to guide you, I will do the second strategy, which is the buy, refurbish and, and refinance. You are not in property for a get rich quick scheme strategy. You are there for the long term. You're there to make wealth, create generational wealth. Okay, so if you've got that mindset, maybe it's better to hold on to the properties. And nowadays, there's so many other strategies that would allow you to make income anyways without selling. You have rent to SA, you have rent to rent, and we have holiday let strategies that would allow you to make lots of money. So you don't have to sell those properties in order to make this money, right? However, if you're one of those who don't like to deal with tenants, who do not like to deal with property problems, who do not want to manage a property, who just do not want to deal with anything to do with property, you just prefer to buy, flip, buy, flip, that strategy would be the best for you, okay? Because you don't want those nightmares, you don't want to like, uh, I know it's not gonna be nightmare if you buy the right property, but you don't wanna deal with property problems. So maybe flipping would be the best strategy for you. You, you just flip, 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 and then obviously when you get tired, then that's it. But bearing in mind that you're not creating any wealth and that money wants to start becoming lots of money it get did de it get deraded in value the value goes down and then you end up having so much cash but you know the value goes down every single day like you know how in how inflation has been sky skyrocketing right now and uh, the value of the money is going down every almost almost every single minute so i would i would, I would, I would say if that's if that's your thing is fine i'm not saying it's wrong because everybody has their own objective. But for me personally, I like and I love to keep my properties. I like to drive past my property. I like to visit my properties. I like to see my monthly income coming every month. If it's 300 or 400, I don't care. I know I've got that residual income coming in. And I love to remortgage my properties after a couple of years and pull some of that money out to get it onto another property. So to conclude, for me personally, I'd love the buy refurbish and refinance strategy because that's the strategy that allow me to create generational wealth is a strategy that would allow me to provide the homes for people who loves it the most it, 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 it is a strategy that would allow my family my children to be able to inherit wealth whilst i'm gone and these are the properties that would allow me to make money whilst i sleep i really hope this video has been helpful if this video has been helpful, don't forget to hit the like button below. Subscribe to my channel for more amazing videos. I look forward to sharing the next video.